so we have been learning about the union executive since many days and today you know under the union executive uh, after president so let us learn the next authority in the union executive who is nothing but the vice president of india so the vice president of india comes under you know next to president in the union executive hierarchy the constitution of india provides for the office of president so according to the constitution there is a provision for creation of vice president of india post and the vice president of india is elected by again an electoral college so like president even vice president is also elected by an electoral college so in president electoral college we have seen members of both houses of parliament and mls right but in the case of election of vice president both houses of parliament will be you know involving in the election of vice president here no mls from each state will be involved in the election of vice president so vice president will have electoral will be elected by an electoral college which consists of mps from both lok sabha and rajya sabha so the mps from both lok sabha and rajya sabha will elect the vice president here no mls will be elected already rajya sabha itself is the representation of states so again in the election of the rajya sabha chairman or vice president again mls are no need to vote hence you know only mps of lok sabha and rajya sabha will involve in the vice president election so the qualifications to become uh, for the post of vice president is same that of the president like you know he must have uh, he must be a citizen of india and all like uh, he must have crossed the age of 35 years and all similar but the only additional qualification that requires here is he must have qualifications necessary for becoming the member of rajya sabha like for example if you take president he should have qualification to become as uh, i mean he must possess the qualifications of a lok sabha member who president whereas vice president will require the qualifications to become a rajya sabha member so this is a difference between the qualification of president and vice president and like the president the term of vice president is 5 years okay so he will also be in his position for 5 years he can also resign or he can be removed by a majority resolution so in case of his resolution he can submit this to the president of india and he can resign or if he wants to suppose if he has done some unconstitutional things then he can be removed by a majority resolution of rajya sabha so like you know here majority members who are present that day they can pass a resolution accepting the removal of uh, vice president and they can remove him but such a removal should be even agreed by majority of lok sabha here in lok sabha they also should agree for the you know the impeachment or the removal process whatever has been uh, you know done for the vice president so vice president of india also acts as chairman of rajya sabha right so here that reflects in his qualification that he should possess a qualification which is equal to that a member of rajya sabha so this is about the introduction of vice president and coming to the functions of vice president what was his role <clears throat> the most an important function of vice president is he is the ex officio chairman of rajya sabha by his authority okay he functions as the chairman of rajya sabha and hence he must have the qualifications required for a rajya sabha member so we said that right as he looks after the rajya sabha as he chairs the rajya sabha he should also have you know the qualifications required for a member to become rajya sabha as he is the chairman of rajya sabha he has to know how rajya sabha will function until and unless he gets qualification of a rajya sabha member he cannot run a rajya sabha house and he officiates the president 
in case of death resignation or removal so whenever president is dead in his office maybe you know when he was in office office in the sense like when he was president still if he dies or if he resigns from his office or if he is impeached vice president will act as president and when he acts as president he ceases to be the ex officio chairman of rajya sabha so during any of the situations like death resignation or removal of the president vice president will become president and during such situations he will lose the position of rajya sabha chairman because once he becomes president he, he is not eligible to become again as a rajya sabha chairman i mean he cannot continue as rajya sabha chairman once a new president is elected he can again come back and resume his position of rajya sabha chairman otherwise his position will cease i mean it will not be existing if he replaces the president in case of his death resignation or you call it like uh, impeachment this is about the vice president and his functions coming to the other, coming to the other important real executive of the nation so we said that the president is the nominal executive the real executive is the prime minister so the prime minister is the real executive head in parliamentary governments like india so i have discussed in the very beginning of the chapter that under presidential governance of uh, system president will act as a real executive whereas india adopted parliamentary form of governance in parliamentary form of governance prime minister who is part of parliament will be the real executive head of the nation he is leader of the majority party in lok sabha so in lok sabha the government will be functioning and the government is nothing but the party which got majority and he is leader of that majority party and to help the prime minister he is assisted by council of ministers so in the constitution there is provision for council of ministers or prime minister there is no word called prime minister but there is only council of ministers so prime minister will be having an assistance from this council of ministers there are a group of ministers which help a prime minister to govern this country and the prime minister along with the council of ministers aid and advise the president so in the functions of president or in the functions of parliament wherever president is required okay wherever president functions with reference to parliament prime minister and his council of ministers will give advices and only on the advice of prime minister and council of ministers president has to function such is the power of prime minister and the prime minister is appointed by president so you can see in the picture here narendra modi the prime minister is being taking oath ceremony by our president ramnath kovind he is giving oath ceremony to the prime minister so president appoints prime minister and while appointing the prime minister the president cannot act arbitrarily so how to elect prime minister how to select prime minister suppose a party got majority share and this party is ready to form government before ready to form the government they have to elect the leader that leader will become prime minister so that person who is having acceptance by majority party can be only appointed as prime minister by president the president cannot arbitrarily choose that means he cannot use his own choice in selecting prime minister only that party which got majority will elect the leader and that leader will in turn you know represent the party in the government so president will take such person as a prime minister candidate not arbitrarily that means he will not use his personal choice in the selection of prime minister he will only depend on the majority party's decision in government so the lok sabha so to form the government so once prime minister candidate is announced then he will become the leader of majority party he will form the government in lok sabha in such and sometimes none of the parties get absolute majority that means 
if single party gets majority then it is easy for the government to form to form the government it is very easy but if there is no party getting majority then what happens two three parties who are having friendly approach they come together and they may form the government right in such situations how this four suppose for example four parties got majority i mean they no party got majority that majority has been shared between four parties now these four parties wanted to come together and they wanted to form the government in such situations the president may exercise his discretionary power so from these four parties which person should become president it's a question of doubt right in such situation president may use his discretionary powers that means based on the constitutional validities he can use his power and he can ask anybody from these four parties to get elevated as prime minister but the president has to appoint that person who can prove his majority in the house for example so i said that for example this four parties together formed government at central level and president has selected one among one person who is having some popularity among these four as prime minister candidate and this prime minister candidate has to prove his majority in lok sabha again if this person cannot prove majority he cannot remain as prime minister understood that means he should have acceptance of all the parties which came together unless they have acceptance for this candidate this candidate cannot prove his majority in lok sabha so president even though he uses his discretionary power he must select such a candidate that he is acceptable to all the parties that are involving in the formation of government so this is about the introduction of prime minister so if you look at the functions of prime minister they are categorized into many different ways he monitors and works in all the other departments under him he is the real executive head of the country and also he is majority of the leader part leader of the majority party he acts as a link between president people and parliament or he acts as a link between his ministers and president and he advises and informs president on all the matters he prime minister will be the person is the person who selects all the ministers in his council he distributes all the ministries or portfolios to all the ministers and he can expand his council of minister and he can demand anybody to resign from the minister post and he also monitors all other ministers work and all other departments so such a wide variety of powers have been given to prime minister of india so come let us now discuss about the powers and functions of prime minister we said that he is a real executive and he has wide variety of powers being real executive head of the nation he has lot of powers what are those powers and functions of prime minister so the first and foremost power and function is he acts as a link between council of ministers and president so council of ministers are the team of ministers that are involved in helping the prime minister so you can look here the council of ministers and prime minister acts as a link between president and his council of ministers these are his team and this is president at the, at the head of the nation nominal head of the nation between these two prime minister act as a link he informs the president about the decisions of the cabinet and the matters of government so there is a term called cabinet here so council of ministers is all the ministers of prime minister i mean the prime minister can appoint any i mean there are a limit to that but the total number of ministers available with uh, uh, you know prime minister is called council of ministers his whole team among his total number of ministers senior most members of his team or his council of ministers he will select them as cabinet so among the total number of ministers that are with prime minister he selects some of the ministers some senior members of the ministers as cabinet ministers and these cabinet ministers 
will be very crucial in the decision making process of prime minister so cabinet and prime minister this both will be very powerful so within the council of ministers cabinet is part but prime minister will be only dealing with the cabinet ministers on all the decisions so whatever prime minister and cabinet has taken the decision all such decisions will be informed by prime minister to president so if you look at this picture here they are the very important and senior most members of modi so he appointed them as his cabinet ministers generally they will take oath as council of minister later prime minister will give important ministries to them like home minister defense minister foreign minister finance minister and all such thing and he will be only dealing with those ministers the other i mean junior ministers will be working under this cabinet so prime minister has a close relationship to the cabinet and the cabinet and prime minister will be deciding all the decisions and all such decisions will be informed by prime minister to president and the president appoints the other ministers of the cabinet only on the advice of prime minister so only on the advice of prime minister such all ministers will be appointed by president the prime minister distributes portfolios among the council of ministers see which ministry has to be given to which person all such things can be decided by the prime minister here portfolios means which ministry which ministry is important to the person everything is decided by prime minister and he will later give that list to president once prime minister give that list to president he will call all those ministers for oath taking ceremony and thus prime minister plays a very important role in distributing the ministries to all the ministers the prime minister presides over the meetings of the cabinet and coordinates the working of various departments whenever there, i told you what is cabinet right it is an important it is a group of important ministers who are generally senior most members of the political party among the council of ministers so among the if suppose if there are some 20 members in council of ministers there might be some 10 members which are who are very senior to party to which they belong and prime minister will select those 10 members as cabinet ministers and he will preside over all the meetings whenever such cabinet meetings occur and he coordinates the working of the various departments so every ministry will have different departments finance ministry will have finance department home ministry will have home department all departments will be coordinated through cabinet by prime minister so continuing with the powers and functions of prime minister it is on the advice of prime minister president summons and prorogues the parliament so summons means beginning prorogue means ending who has the power to give orders to begin or end the parliament president he will give the orders to start a session or to end the session there are three sessions right monsoon session budget session and winter session to start any session or to end any session who will give orders president will give orders and how the president can give orders only on the advice of prime minister so here prime minister will give advice by discussing with the cabinet and based on that president will give orders to start or end this session of a parliament and also to dissolve lok sabha who will give orders again it is the president and what is dissolving of lok sabha whenever the government loses majority in house in such times you know they have to resign and the government will be collapsed and the dissolving of lok sabha because lok sabha is the place where the government will function and in such house if government loses majority it is said to be dissolved who will give orders of dissolution it is given by president when the president will give to orders to dissolve lok sabha only when prime minister advises him if prime minister resigns and advises the president to dissolve lok sabha then president will give an order to dissolve the lok sabha and 
Prime Minister is the chief spokesperson and defender of the government in the parliament. So you can see here Narendra Modi defending on the policies made by government. So they may, you know, they may bring any issues. They see the main purpose of government is they come and you know, make laws in the parliament, and they get that laws in the form of bills. And when that bills are introduced, discussion and debate will occur. During such discussion and debates, then what happens? The prime minister will become the chief spokesperson. He will be talking about the functions of government, the programs of the government in the parliament, and he defends the government. That means whenever you know the opposition parties try to find fault with the government programs or the works done by government, the prime minister will defend the policies of the government. That means he will stand and he will speak in such a way that supporting the government. He make all important announcements on national policies on the floor of the house. So whenever there is a, a national issue and all, it is prime minister who becomes a you know center person who will explain about all these things. He may announce any things on the floor of the house where Lok Sabha generally Lok Sabha. The prime minister represents the country at international conferences like Conference of Heads of Commonwealth Nations, Non-Aligned Nations, SARC Nations. So there are many group of nations, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, several nations, they come together and they form some, you know, group like, uh, you know, BRICS summit, you say, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, they all form one group of nations. So in such conferences, and you know, the prime minister, you can see in BRICS summit, Narendra Modi is meeting with all other uh, heads of those nations. Similarly, he will represent Commonwealth nations and SORC nations, Southeast Asian regional countries and all. You know, they're all uh, different kinds of groups, you know, which the countries have formed. And he also recommends appointment of Chief Justices of Supreme Court and High Courts, Judges of Supreme Court and High Courts, along with the governors of the states. So he recommends the Chief Justices, Judges of Supreme Court and Governors of the states. So, Thus, by looking at all his powers, you can understand that Prime Minister is the key person around which the entire constitutional machinery runs. So he becomes very important with all such important powers. The success or failure of the government depends on the leadership of Prime Minister. So if the Prime Minister takes decisions wrong, then it, the entire government has to bear the entire cabinet and government has to bear the consequences. If they take a very good decision, they get all fame equally. And Prime Minister is a key person in all such decisions. So we have discussed just now about the Prime Minister, his powers and functions. Now let us understand the you know, people who are helping him. So the key people who are the team that helps the Prime Minister is Council of Ministers in constitution there is a term called Council of Ministers. There is a provision for Council of Ministers. And these Council of Ministers are headed by Prime Minister to aid and advise the President. So to give advices and to help the President in discharging his functions, this Council of Ministers headed by Prime Minister he is very important. And the Prime Minister is appointed by the President who also appoints other ministers. So this council of ministers are appointed by whom? They are appointed by president. And president appoints this council of ministers on the advice of prime minister. So and the prime minister will select his team and give that list to president. Only then president will appoint all this council of ministers. And the council of ministers is collectively responsible to Lok Sabha. So what is this collective responsibility? All the decisions taken by ministers and prime minister he is bound to everyone. So if something goes wrong, the ministers can't say that it is prime minister decision and the prime minister can't say that the ministers forced him. It is a collective decision. Whatever a decision is taken by government, it should it will come out as a decision from the council of ministers. Hence, they called it as collective responsibility to talk Lok Sabha. And such council of ministers are completely answerable and responsible to Lok Sabha. 
not Rajya Sabha. Why? Because the government functions from Lok Sabha. The Prime Minister and his Council of Ministers will function from Lok Sabha. Hence, the Council of Ministers are collectively together they are responsible to Lok Sabha but not Rajya Sabha. And along, see in the Council of Ministers there are different categories of ministers like cabinet ministers these are the types of council of ministers one is cabinet minister then minister of state then comes deputy ministers these are the three types of ministers that are included in council of ministers this division has been done by prime minister himself no there is no such a division in constitution but for the convenience of his uh, administration he divided he generally prefers to have his council of ministers in three categories one is cabinet one is minister of state and other is deputy minister among these three categories of minister cabinet minister is very important so the cabinet ministers will be very important with prime minister they are the senior most leaders of the party and they hold important portfolios that means they are given very important uh, you know like uh, ministries and all they are senior most leaders of the party they will take important ministries and decide major policies of the government so this cabinet is a core ministry group they may be very few in number but they are very close to prime minister and prime minister will be only having meetings only this with cabinet ministers not with minister of state and no deputy ministers this minister of state and deputy ministers they will be under the cabinet so prime minister will discuss with cabinet and later cabinet ministers will give information to minister of state and deputy minister so that they can coordinate the decisions taken by cabinet so prime minister the cabinet ministry form the nucleus of the administration so along with prime minister the cabinet ministers they form the nucleus that means a very important position in fact cabinet is the pivot means very important in the whole administration the entire country's administration revolves around the cabinet ministers headed by prime minister they are such close and you know, they are most senior and you know, they have very important ministers with them so this is about the council of ministers and their introduction coming to the powers and functions of cabinet so as i said this cabinet is very important in the administration let us see what are its powers the cabinet performs the following functions like it makes both external and internal policies of the government so i will say what is this policies and all in the next slide so that means the major see policies are nothing but they are the decisions that are required for a nation to develop so both external and internal policies of the government on any matter you take defense security energy requirements savings health projects anything the cabinet will take decisions it is a very important body in taking policy decisions on all important subjects in the country and if the, if, the, if there is an emergency in the state that the state government has collapsed and now immediately president rule has to be imposed even during that time cabinet will advise the president through prime minister and formation of new states electoral reforms you take any important aspect of this nation all important decisions taken by the cabinet headed by prime minister it is a policy framing body that means decision making body and it determines policies which are followed by ministers the concerned department so under them there will be different ministers and various departments all the departments and ministers they have to follow whatever the cabinet has taken decision once the cabinet takes a decision it gives that decisions to minister of state or the next who are the lower group of ministers or deputy ministers and then comes the departments with ias and no other offices these three people they have to function according to the decisions of the cabinet the cabinet course coordinates the working of various departments 
see not only it gives the decisions but it will check how the decisions are being implemented and in checking that decisions it tries to bring coordination between various departments so suppose if a decision is taken on uh, defense they want to buy some weapons for defense ministry then the money will come from finance ministry and defense ministry will have their departments finance ministry will have their departments so now what cabinet will do through the defense minister it will try to coordinate uh, between the finance minister and defense minister so that the both departments come together and let that policy get implemented the cabinet is responsible for the expenditure of government and raising the revenue necessary to meet it so the cabinet will be very important because the budget will be introduced by you know the government in lok sabha through an important cabinet minister called finance minister so budget is nothing but the total expenditure and income that you know we get regularly per year based on that i know who proposes this budget finance minister who is this finance minister a important member in cabinet of prime minister so through budget only they can spend money so that spending of money is given power through the i mean cabinet will decide all such important things of expenditure it prepares the presidential address to parliament while issuing ordinances so whenever parliament is not in session and it wants to make a law it is not possible because parliament is not in session but to meet the emergency situation what parliament will do through the government which is nothing but cabinet it will prepare the draft copy which is nothing but ordinance and it will send it to the president and president will issue this ordinance and it's serve as a it will serve as a temporary law so from cabinet only even this decision of ordinance will go to president and the cabinet decides foreign policy of the nation that means how country of how our country should have relation with another country and the, it negotiates agreements and choose ambassadors so in the president may have authority to um, uh, appoint ambassadors but it is the cabinet who will advise the president on all such things if any agreement has to be made with any other country all such things is decided by cabinet and later they will give it to president it is only on the recommendation of the cabinet president can declare emergency so this emergency also we studied right there is national emergency we have a state emergency and financial emergency national emergency can be declared only on the advice of cabinet to president president can de cannot declare on his own and even in any state if there is a failure of constitutional machinery then even that is advised by cabinet to president said so and so state has problem with constitutional machinery the government is not there why don't we have president rule then the president will accordingly impose a president rule so financial emergency the same thing whenever the country is financially in problem during such time financial emergency is also imposed on the advice of cabinet to the president for your understanding so this is just for your understanding that you no know, public policy we said right what is public policy that cabinet makes so what is what the government is going to do why they are going to do all such things a program of goals values and practice so whatever the you know policy it consists of the goals that governments want to reach the values and how they wanted to reach it is nothing but a line of action how government wants to function that is nothing but policy and that policy is for public purpose so if you look at here you know prime minister indira gandhi here her policy towards banks public was she nationalized 14 banks to central government they were all nationalized so which is a good public policy you take modi here he has taken some decisions key cabinet decisions you know all such things come as a policy matter and this is the cabinet ministers of modi and now if you look at 2019 and 2014 see here council of ministers in 2014 or 24 i know like uh, you take cabinet ministers these are minister of state and these are minister of a uh, deputy ministers you call so here the cabinet minister 
may hold one or many ministers under his control ministries under his control so this is about the chapter union executive